Hello everybody, this is Lisa from Rita Skeins and Crochet Podcast. I am here today with Mom of Skeins. Say hi, Mom of Skeins. Hi. <laughs> Doa. And today we're going to share with you a tutorial for how to line a handmade bag. Namely, this one. Mom, was this a um, Tunisian crochet or regular crochet? No, regular crochet. So mom crocheted this bag and then she made this lining for the bag. So on to the tutorial. I measured the bottom of my bag to get the dimensions of the lining. Horizontal measurement will give you the width of the front and back panel of the lining. Vertical measurement is the width of the side panels. I'm just You need the height of your bag to for your lining. So I measure from the bottom to the top you see there's a borderline between the stitches because they're two different stitches. So make sure that you measure from that spot to the top of your bag. Now that you have your measurements, you're ready to create your lining. So press your fabric, measure, and cut your pieces. Here I have the front, and then these are the sides. I have two of each, and one piece for the bottom of the bag. You want to give yourself at least an inch seam allowance. If you're going to line your bag, also cut out your um, interfacing for each piece. If you decide to interface your bag, you're going to need an iron and a pressing cloth. The pressing cloth should be damp. So you put down your fabric Make sure that it's laying flat and then put your interfacing on top of it. Make sure you're putting your interfacing on the wrong side of the fabric. You don't have to move your iron back and forth. What you want to do is lay your iron on the pressing cloth in sections. She's 10, about 10 to 20 seconds on each section and making sure that everything is still flat move it all over until you get to the other side of your piece Once you got to the other side, check your fabric to make sure the interfacing is well adhered. If you find a spot where it's not complete, just put your iron back onto there with your pressing cloth and hold the iron there for a few more seconds just to make sure everything is completely done. Now you're ready to mark your sewing lines and begin sewing. Now 
Now my pieces are all marked with about an inch seam allowance, except for some a couple of the sides where I was a little bit short on fabric. Now I'm pinning my pieces together and what I'm making sure is that the sewing lines line up. It might be different on the seam allowance along the edges because like I said my size I was a little short on fabric but as long as my sewing lines line up it's all good. You'll notice that the sides of the bag, the side of the linings has three sewing lines and the bottom has four sewing lines. That, that helps to align your bag when you're pinning it. The lines tell you where the bottom of your bag is and where the top of your bag is. Now we have the four sides pinned together, we're going to put the bottom of the bag on. At the bottom of the four sides is a sewing line, and that line is going to get matched to the sewing lines of the bottom of the bag. You want to make it flat, edge to edge, and then pin along those sewing lines. So now we're going to fit the lining into the bag. We're going to line up the sides and pin them in place to make sure everything fits the way it's supposed to. So now I'm trying the lining into the bag. And what I found was that the lining seems to be a little smaller than the bag and I was surprised because I had measured everything and everything seemed to be working fine but I put the handles on the bag before I put the lining in so the handles stretched out just the top of the bag and made the lining not fit on top so what I ended up doing was taking the lining apart at the sides and letting, letting it out so it would fit the bag better. And that's a great example of why you leave extra seam allowance because I was able to do that only because I had the extra seam allowance. So when I'm stitching the lining together, I usually stitch about an eighth of an inch outside of the sewing line because it gives a little ease for fitting your bag. Also, if you put your pins in from bottom up, it makes it easy to just take the pins out as you sew and not, you know, run the chance of running over your pins. Now we're ready to actually sew our line into the bag. Make sure that the right side of your fabric is what's showing. And now you pin it, the lining to the bag. You probably have to ease in the bag a little bit, but now it fits well enough. So pin your lining to the bag and begin your hand sewing.
So now we're ready to sew our lining into the bag. Oh, one of the things we want to do is use a needle with a sharp point because you want to go through the raffia and the fabric inside the bag. And what you want to do is do a hemming stitch, a stitch that would be pretty much invisible from the front of the bag so that your bag, your lining is in smoothly and it looks really good if you don't see stitches on top. So I hope that tutorial helped. Mom, any final tips that you might have? Oh, uh, no, just... So if you have any questions, just put them in the chat and I'll try my best to answer them. Cool. So I want to give you guys one last look. I think this adorable mom's been making bags lately. Let me see if I can get that in. But you, you guys know how I am with getting things on camera. So I'll put some good pictures of the bag in here. And that is how it's lined. So I hope that helped. Thank you for joining us.